peace in the midst of turmoil. God has provided for us to have peace in the midst of turmoil. He has promised to protect the body of Christ despite the chaos and lawlessness that surrounds us in this world. It has always been so, and increasingly, now that we are so close to the final trump sounding. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. That's one of his names. Jehovah Shalom, God our peace. Jesus has many titles. He's our healer, he's our banner, he's our peace. He's many things. He's our savior, of course, primarily. But we have to understand that this is something we can grab hold of and live in the midst of, despite the condition of the world. In Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our transgressions, yet we esteemed him stricken, mankind esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And then in Isaiah 54, 9 and 10, For this is like the waters of Noah to me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah would no longer cover the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be angry with you. This is the new covenant, the opposite of the old covenant, where God dealt out his wrath, his His discipline, and all of his displeasure. And he dealt it out upon his people. But now, he says, I will not be angry with you. This is since Jesus came. Nor rebuke you. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed. And that refers to the time of the tribulation, the time of the end, when the mountains and the hills and all the islands will be crushed. So until then, until the last trump sounds, they shall depart and the hills be removed. But my kindness, says the Lord, shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has mercy upon you. His covenant of peace shall not be removed. We have to take these things to heart and take them literally. Otherwise, we will be crushed. We will faint. But if we hang on to this, we won't be. If you take God at his word, you have no need to fear. The world fears, yes, but the true body of Christ does not fear. The worst of everything in the world becomes nothing in the face of the power that God has given you to overcome. And the worse it becomes, the more you should rejoice, because it means that we are even closer to Jesus returning to glorify us and rapture us. So focus on how close we are to the final trump, to the glorification and the rapture which will be the start of our real life in Christ, 
This life on earth is a, a testing time. It's a time where we have the opportunity, we who are of the few who find and stay on the narrow path, we have the opportunity to qualify as permanent members of the body of Christ. But our true life begins after that trump sounds. And we are so close. This should be more real to you than anything else, anything going on around you. In John 16, 33, the word says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. This is Jesus speaking, and he says, In me, if we are in him, we will have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world, says the Lord. He has overcome the world for us. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Yes, Satan is the God of this world, but he is not the God of the body of Christ. Yes, these are treacherous times, which is why it is essential, absolutely essential, that you are a member of the Word as Christ is the Word, that the Word is your reality because you are, since he is the Word, you are the body of the Word. The blood of Jesus is your cloak and your covering. In John 12, 25... He who loves his life will lose it. In other words, if you love your life in this world, if you cling to this world and think this world is wonderful, then you will not qualify as the body of Christ and you will lose your life. And he who hates his life in this world will keep his life for eternity. He will have eternal life. Eternal life. Those who are apart from Christ, who are not walking in the Spirit, are unbelievers. For only by the baptism of the Holy Spirit do we have Christ. And unbelievers will remain behind when we are taken out. They are unprotected even now with what's going on. While we are protected by our covenant in Christ, they are not. They have every reason to fear. You do not have any reason to fear if you are born again in Christ by the Spirit. That is what we are talking about, is being born again of the Spirit. You cannot be spiritually reborn by making a decision. That's salvation. Then you must be part of Christ through the Holy Spirit. So, Romans... 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We're justified by faith. We've all been given the same measure of faith. The only difference is how we use it. Though whom also 
We have access through whom? Through the Holy Spirit, whom? We have access by faith into this grace in which we stand, this unmerited favor that God has given us in which we stand, favor with him, and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We have to understand these things. They can't just be memory verses and little things that we think of from time to time or write as little messages on cards. No, this this is our life. This has to be our life. Ephesians 2, 13 and 14. Ephesians 2, 13 and 14. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is your peace. That's why if you're in him, born again of the Spirit through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You are in him, and he is your peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. Now this means that all people are one. From the moment Christ entered this earth, we all became one. There's no more Jew or Greek. That's what the Lord said in in the book of Galatians. In Christ, there is neither slave nor free, Jew nor Greek, male nor female. But we are all one in Christ. God sees us all as one. And this is very important because that's where we find our peace. And we cannot fail to embrace this. You must be in this world temporarily. But if in Christ, then you are not of this world. You are a citizen of heaven. That's who you are, a citizen of heaven. In Romans 8, 6, But to be carnally minded is death. That means to be dedicated to the natural realm and your own thoughts and own emotions, your flesh. That is eternal death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So if you're focused on and led by the spirit, not the flesh, you have peace. And it's very important Because this world produces nothing but fear and confusion and chaos because Satan is the god of this world. And he came, the word says, to kill, steal, and destroy. And that's all he knows how to do. It's all he wants to do. So if you trust the Lord totally and live according to the word of God, you can dwell in his peace. It is not a myth. It can be your reality. In John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace, this is Jesus speaking, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it. Lest, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. Don't give in to what the world is all about. 
Philippians 4, 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. This is where our hearts and our minds have to be. That's why we have to understand and believe the word beyond all else. We have to be completely just tied to it in our very being because this is our reality. And if you do that, then nothing that is happening around us in the world will trouble you. It will simply cause you to do what this scripture, Philippians, Philippians 4, 4 says, to rejoice. Again, I say rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice that we are near the end and we are about to be glorified and taken out. Amen. If you have any questions, you can call me at the phone number that is on my website, bdhyman.com. And you can also... Email me at answers at bdhyman.com and I'll be very happy to answer your questions. God bless you. Amen.